afternoon, Montreal. I'm Paula Evans. And I'm Lucie Lagege. Welcome to a very special edition of Concordia News. Today, we take a look at Montreal. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Check out what we've discovered. A community initiative makes bad apples taste good. Watch us strip bare Montreal's bad reputation as North America's city of sin. And Montreal's graffiti. Is it art or just plain ugly? Canned applesauce, jam, hearty soup, good for your tummy, and also good for the city. I recently learned that some folks out in NDG have found an innovative way to reduce Montreal's food waste. Find out how. Beautiful, isn't it? Tasty, nutritious. Too bad it won't last. Much of this good food is thrown away before it even reaches a dinner plate. In Montreal alone, 6,000 tons of organic waste are dumped every week. But in an NDG kitchen, a solution is brewing. One act of food security is recapturing that food and distributing it um, amongst people that need it and want it. And that's, uh, that's where the canning project kind of fits in. Vince Tietert is a coordinator with Montreal Urban Community Sustainment, a group affectionately known as MUX. He is holding canning workshops to show Montrealers how to curb their food waste. The tradition runs in his family. Vince is passing down the preservation techniques he learned from his mother. We are able to um, share skills on like uh, the timeless tradition of canning food um, that is lost if you know if you just buy jam or canned peaches from the store. Peaches. Peaches come from a can. They were put there by a man in a factory downtown. If I had my little way, I'd eat peaches every day. Sun soaking bulges in the shade. Moving to the country. The workshops began early this year, and a mix of curiosity and concern is already drawing in a new generation of canners. I'm here today because it's a way uh, for people to congregate together and, and have an activity to, uh, to do. But um, on another sphere, it is a response to a whole bunch of different social issues. Um. Perfectly good food is still rotting away in warehouses because distributors can't get it to consumers in time. This is why everything that comes in here has to be distributed ASAP. So uh, the turnover is between 24 and 48 hours for fruits and vegetables. As director of Moisson Montréal, Christian Raté sees distributors throwing away crates of produce every day. His food bank makes sure that some of it is donated to smaller organizations like Mux. The process to receive this food takes time. Mux is applying for a permit, but until then, its members are getting produce from places like Jean Talon Market. Fresh produce also appeals to Vince for personal reasons. I would like a little bit more control of my life, and food is one of the easiest ways that we can control things like what we put into our body. Finding a way to feed a family is a good start to helping feed a community. All it takes is a can-do spirit. Mux is still holding canning workshops every month. To sign up for the next one, call 514-509-1911. According to the Canadian Health Network, one in five Canadians will suffer mental illness at some point in their lives. I recently found out how some Montrealers prefer art to traditional therapy. Words don't always come easily, and for those dealing with a mental illness, the ability to express oneself is an important step to recovery. But seeing the shrink is not the only option. Art therapy is a way to access the unconscious by combining words and artistic creativity under the guidance of an art therapist. Patients express their feelings through clay, dance, painting, and other forms of art. According to art therapist Radu Christian Barca, this relatively new therapy is a more suitable alternative for many. Sometimes just easier to draw um, something than rather than talk about it. It's a lot less cognitive. It's more emotional, it's more direct. The process of art therapy brings a sense of relief and freedom to the patient. Through subtle clues such as colors, posture, or tone, the art therapist will recognize the patient's needs. Art therapy is becoming more and more popular in Quebec. Les Impatients is one of the leading art therapy centers in Montreal and works with over 250 patients per week. Les Impatients offers directed group workshops in an informal setting for patients to create their own art projects. 
For art therapists, the creative process is of more value than the final aesthetic product or psychological results. If I was working, uh, um, expecting change, I would probably be um, um, disappointed more often. For Barca, it is the ability to express oneself in a comfortable manner that helps patients cope with their difficulties. Despite the growing popularity of art therapy, Barca says therapists are struggling to achieve full recognition for their profession. Recently, the Asociación de Artistes Therapeutes du Quebec devoted an entire week to creative art therapy. Find out more at 514-999-05415. Montreal is also doing good work abroad. For 15 years, a Montreal-based group has been sending volunteers to Guatemala to protect people in danger. But the kind of protection these Montrealers offer has nothing to do with guns or bulletproof vests. Julie Jaffard has this story. This lush landscape looks like the ideal place for a getaway vacation. But for 15 years, the volunteers involved with the Projet Accompagnement Guatemala haven't been coming here for fun. They've served as a pacifying international presence in a country scarred by 40 years of civil war. Nathalie Brière is the project's coordinator. In 10 years, she sent dozens of volunteers to Guatemala. A mere foreign presence among these people whose safety is jeopardized reduces the risks of human rights abuses, she says. These people are union members, farmers, or people who fled Guatemala during the war and have now returned. Volunteers are there to protect them from soldiers, rebels, or private mercenaries. Although it sounds like it might be a dangerous job for volunteers, Breyer says there's never been one incident. The volunteers themselves don't seem scared, but they can expect to go through some tough experiences. Aurélie Couture-Glasgow spent six months in Guatemala. The McGill student says she will never forget some of the things she heard there. I had never thought I would ever meet someone who lived through a genocide and saw his six kids die before his eyes, she says. Couture Glasgow says she might volunteer again in the future, but hopes the situation in Guatemala won't call for it. In order to be eligible, volunteers must be available for a minimum of three months. They also should be able to cover their own costs. Volunteers will be screened to make sure their intentions are in the right place. Six volunteers have enrolled to leave for Guatemala this year. The group is hoping for four more before the training session begins in April. Lucille? We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we'll explore Montreal's bad side. From its reputation as North America's sin city to some of its bad, bad girls. Welcome back everyone, we're talking about Montreal, the bad. Once again, Playboy magazine has picked our city as one of North America's top bachelor party destinations. Reporter Amy Torek discovers what it means to be sexy in this city. The romantic cobblestone streets of Montreal's Old Port seem far removed from the strip clubs of St. Catherine's Street. But 18th century Montreal historian Marianne Putinen says the city's reputation as Canada's sin city started hundreds of years ago. We didn't, um, we didn't have prohibition in Quebec. Um, so there weren't those kinds of regulations, if you like, that, that happened. Or there wasn't the dominance of a, of a Protestant, Anglo-Protestant bourgeoisie, even though they were. And I think more really importantly, too, is that Quebecers, Montrealers, took great pride in this reputation as being an open city. Um, and they didn't want to be like Toronto. At one of Montreal's foremost burlesque shows, Diary of a Lost Circus, performers come from all across Canada to seek out Montreal's open and accepting attitude. Crystal the Stage Kitten recently moved here from Alberta. You can do anything you want in Montreal. It's so much more open, so much more open here. But perhaps the best example of Montreal's open and accepting attitude comes in the form of Montreal nightlife icon Plastic Patrick. He has repeatedly appeared on the Montreal Mirror's Best of Montreal poll in both the most desirable male category and Montreal's Best Weirdo. So I, I think I'm a living example that Montreal is a very uh, all-around accepting and loving community type of city. It's your confidence you put yourself on stage with is what's sexy. 
That was Diary founder and producer Dom Castelli, whose own gutsy performance proved that whatever body type you have and whatever language you speak, sexy is and always has been a part of Montreal's state of mind. For Concordia News, I'm Amy Torek. So remember, Montreal, being sexy in the city is less about being a perfect 10 and more about having a perfect attitude. Roller Derby is back. That's where you'll find some of the city's bad girls. The Montreal Contrabanditas defeated the Toronto Gorgor -Gor girls in their first match ever. Lillian Bochter has all the highlights. The Montreal Contrabanditas came out in full gear and ready to rock and roll at their first official bout. They played hard and their last year of preparation showed in their blocks and endurance. The Toronto Gorgor -Gor girls were in the lead, but the Contrabanditas pushed their way to a close and breathless 91-89 win. Players from Montreal's second roller derby team, Les Filles des Rois, watched and cheered. Lauren Thomas, whose derby name is Very Fairy, talked about the challenges of the game. At least for our team and the people that are watching it, I think a lot of people don't know how exhausting it is to be out there and anytime you Anytime you jam or you're the one that's getting all the points, it's a full-on sprint that you're doing for a lot of laps. And you do one round and it's hard to breathe, like it really takes you out. After all the speed skating, elbowing, pushing and falling, the Contrabanditas and the Gorgo girls shook hands and celebrated, happy that roller derby is back. Lillian Butter, Concordia News. If you want to strap on some skates, the team practices every Sunday and Thursday at the Recreatec Roller Rink in Laval. After a short break, we'll return with Montreal, the Ugly. My name is David and I'm here in Toronto, Nathan Phillips Square, but when I'm in Montreal, I always watch the good, the bad, and the ugly. You hear a lot about the environment these days, but light pollution is a less visible issue. Julie Jaffard reports. Street lamps parking lots, public buildings. Montreal is flooded with lights at night. A group of astrophysicians from Laval University found Montreal emits as much light as New York City with just a quarter of the population. Light pollution doesn't only disturb our sleeping patterns. It has also thrown a veil over what used to be a beautiful dark sky full of stars. Pierre Bastien is the director of the Mont Mégantic Observatory. He says light pollution is a lot of waste. Shopping centers could dim their lights at 9 p.m. and turn them off at 11, he says. Studies have shown that in some parts of Quebec, the sky is 50% brighter today than it was in 1978. Bastien says Quebec's high hydroelectric capacity is partly to blame for light pollution in the province. Electricity is cheap and there's no real incentive to limit its use. For example, this type of street light directs 30% of its light towards the sky. The Fédération des Astronomes Amateurs du Québec says wasteful lighting costs the city of Montreal $15 million each year. One thing we could do is install street lamps with reflective covers to send the light downwards, Bastien says. That's one of many simple things we need to do to bring the stars back in Montreal's night sky. For Concordia News, I'm Julie Geffard. In 2001, the city of Montreal implemented a plan to control light pollution in old Montreal. The plan is yet to be extended to the whole city. Take a walk down St. Catherine Street. You'll see a colorful array of graffiti, tags and murals. Some see a vibrant street art. Others say it's ugly and the city wants it to go. Lillian Bachter has more. Do you find this ugly? How about this? Or this? Graffiti first started in Montreal in the late 80s. Since then, Montreal has become known for its tags, murals and street art. Frederick Kirzen is a graffiti artist. He is now part of the collective running Le Cop Shop, a plateau gallery featuring street and outsider art. So when you look at a graffiti mural, it's the evolution of the name still. It's all letter-based, um, you know, and they just, they just really push the, uh, the stylistic aspects of it. He agrees that some tags may be ugly, but as a graffiti artist, also sees their beauty and essential nature to the art form. Fundamentally, that is the, the structure, it's the, it's the bones of 
a graffiti piece. One of the reasons that street art is so widespread here, says Hirzin, is that the city's policy is more relaxed than places like New York. Currently, though, Montreal is implementing tougher rules. Mayor Gerard Tremblay announced that Montrealers will pay stiff fines for littering, graffitiing, and not removing graffiti from their private properties. Many boroughs offer assistance programs to home and business owners for graffiti removal. Based out of this building, the Public Works Graffiti Section spends $1.3 million every year for graffiti removal from public areas. With a crew of 8 in the winter and 20 in the summer, the target is tags rather than murals. Tags are a pest in Montreal. La Rose says that the city supports graffiti murals when landlords allow them. She also says that the city encourages youth to make their mark on the five legal walls in Montreal. Both Hirzin and La Rose agree that whether you think graffiti is ugly or beautiful, it's here to stay. The basis for a grafter is to be seen. So Montreal is seeing everywhere of the, in the world. That's why we will always have graffitis in Montreal. Lillian Bachter, Concordia News. You can check out paintings by the famous graffiti artist Jean-Michel Basquiat at the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts. So that's it for our show. We gave you this portrait of Montreal, the good, the bad, and the ugly. For Concordia News, I'm Lucie Lagege. And I'm Paola Evans. See you next time. I always watch the good and bad and ugly with my mom and dad. <laughs>